Hello everybody, welcome to Vinyl Tap here on the That's The Metal Patreon. This is the series where we celebrate physical media, vinyl, uh, merch collections, any of that business. On that point, obviously it's basically all been vinyl so far. Um, it, it's been a little while since I've done one of these. Um, I did have a specific idea of um, some stuff that I was going to be doing for the next Vinyl Tap that would be a, a little bit kind of just not the same things that we've been doing so far. And then time kept just getting away from me for uh, for doing it. And I've been some places and I've accumulated like a whole bunch of stuff since uh, the last one of doing these. So what I'm going to do is this video is going to be that stuff. Um, so a big pile of vinyl, that, that kind of stuff, usual business. Um, and I'm going to do another one of these fairly soon, uh, a few weeks or something. Um, that will be the, the original idea that uh, I, I had. I'm making it sound a lot more kind of snazzy and exciting than it really is, but uh, it'll be cool. But uh, as I said, I've been around. I've, I've accumulated some stuff in the last few weeks that uh, I've got, well, a couple months even, that I've got in this pile next to me. So let's get cracking. First thing is, straight off the bat, about four records, but uh, it's a whole bunch of Unto Others slash... Formerly Idle Hands, only one of these is, but uh, yeah, you know that band. A whole bunch of Unto Others stuff that I've got. I kind of picked all this stuff up sort of piecemeal in um, the last uh, few weeks and stuff like that. I was kind of waiting for some bits to come in and what kind of stuff. Uh, starting off with strength, naturally. Uh, this was my album of the year, 2021. Um, congratulations. Uh, it's a fucking wonderful, wonderful album, isn't it? Um, I think I mentioned... Uh, in one of these other videos that um, we're waiting for them to print it as they have, you know, again, everyone's waiting for their uh, vinyl records and stuff, pressing plant times, all that kind of business. So um, in 2021, it was not available to buy for vinyl, but I think it came out in about March or something like that. I went in on, I think the day it came out uh, to buy it in HMV. So classic, classic business. Um, it's quite nice. It's on a, a white vinyl looks very very classy and, and simple um see classy and simple the the way that they've got the lyrics printed and stuff like that and just kind of straight text uh it reminds me of um old metallica albums like when you buy cds of uh or vinyl i guess of you know the 80s metallica records and they all have that very simple just you know leper messiah and then the lyrics like that uh so i, I don't know if that's an intentional reference but that obviously adds that sort of classic sensibility that uh i get from a package like this i fucking love the cover artwork i think i said it was my favorite artwork of last year on the tnm awards at some point just very very uh i don't know austere and kind of glossy looking and i particularly i think i mentioned on that show the back cover with this, this lone horse just like pegging it through uh fucking roadrunner label down there so cool um yeah through that lightning storm just uh, absolutely gorgeous stuff. Uh, the other stuff I mentioned, uh, I suppose, a little bit more exciting in terms of where it was picked up. Uh, this is the Don't Waste Waste Your Time Complete Sessions, I think it's called, which is uh, basically the Don't Waste Your Time EPs 1 and 2 on one record. Uh, they were selling this. I think they are available. They went up for everyone to kind of buy maybe in about a month or so ago, or a few weeks ago, but uh, they were selling it early at their UK shows in, in March that I went to. What a fucking show that was. Uh, but yeah, they were selling these early from the merch desk, and so, of course, I picked one up. This is on a... I don't know if you'll be able to see it very well. Uh, yeah, sort of black and red. Very nice. Um, don't Waste Your Time 1 EP was, uh, if you're not super, you know, haven't gone on every single bit of this band's back catalogue. Uh, it was their first release before the first album came out. I believe it was 2018 that that was released. And uh, that caused, you know, uh, that stirred up some buzz in the underground for them because, holy shit, like, uh, Gabriel's performance as a singer isn't quite as good on it as he would, you know, grow into his voice more on the next couple of records. But, like, these songs, I mean, it starts with Blade and the Will, which is on the first record, is just fucking mega. And then even still, non, you know, LP songs that have just uh, always been on this record. By Way of Kingdom, Can You Hear the Rain, which I sing literally every time it's fucking raining outside my house. Uh, time Crushes All, amazing songs. Uh, Don't Waste Your Time 2 was, 
I can't remember if it was the first thing they released as Unto Others or the last as Idle Hands. I think it was the last as Idle Hands um, came out after the record came out. So there are, in fact, two years between. It's a bit weird, like a side B on this goes straight from Can You Hear the Rain from the first EP into just the two tracks from the second one. But there's two years between uh, the two sets of recordings on this LP. But it's quite handy to have it all on uh, one thing. Classic Celtic Cross uh, look. Yeah, very, very nice. Um, wasn't going to walk away from that show without buying anything from the, uh, the the merch desk, so I was glad to grab this. Uh, it doesn't really matter from the second EP as well. It's fucking amazing. And then Puppy Love has got the lasers going all over the place. Uh, the latest one to, I guess, uh, arrive for me was the I Believe in Halloween 7-inch. Um, they, they did have that at the merch table on their... Uh, UK run, but I'd already pre-ordered it when it came out in, like, October and was waiting for it to fucking come. <laughs> it finally arrived, like, a couple of weeks ago, which was sort of a prompt for me to go, like, oh, yeah, I should really finally get around to making this video. Um, this was, again, just fucking outrageous that they had all of those amazing songs on strength and then turned up for Halloween 21. I was like, here's two more. Uh, out in the Graveyard is genuinely one of my favourite Unto Others songs. Like, so catchy, so fun. Uh, I wish they played that one, but uh, they did Dalmatian instead, which was another very, very good tune. Um, obviously, it's Halloween, so it's on orange. It's one of those funny seven inches where you need the the, the middle thing, the kind of stabiliser in order to actually play it. I think I have one of those, but I haven't dug it out yet to actually give this a spin. But two just more amazing fucking tunes. There we go. Hassle avoided for you lot watching this. Um, alone I was walking at night. I was walking at night. Yeah, fucking <laughs> incredible little record. So cool. Put it on streaming. I listened to it like, I listened to those songs enough and enjoyed them enough. Um, it was a Bandcamp exclusive uh, for like the day that it came out on Halloween. But like, yeah, can't be going without those songs if you are, you know, an Unto Others fan and you only heard the album. And then to top that whole thing off, I thought, uh, this is not new obviously, but um, thought I've got the Unto Others collection in there, so I'll include it in the video. Mana, released under the name Idle Hands. This is, of course, uh, the only thing that I have on the Idle Hands name on the, the record front. I've got some CDs, I've got, you know, shirt and all sorts of bloody pins and patches and stuff on in this little drawer next to me that I picked up when they were doing their uh, um, get rid of everything, we can't use that name anymore sale. I don't think I got that record during that sale. I might have done, I can't remember. But, uh, obviously... Idle Hands, the original name of Unto Others. This album is what started my, my love affair with this band. You may remember me in 2019 when it came out, just going fucking mental over it. It might still be my favourite thing they've done. Like, this and, and Strength are two basically equally good records in my eyes. They are both, like, fucking 9.5s out of 10s. Like, uh, it's just a case of, like, oh, a single Solemn Rose or When Will God's Work Be Done? But, like... My God, what, what a debut. Um, record is blue, suits the cover, very nice. Uh, yeah, I'm very glad that uh, I managed to you know, grab this with the Idle Hands name on it before they uh, had to change everything. Because obviously if you go on streaming and everything for this record, they've changed the cover art to um, be obviously um, unto others. Uh, but I felt like it's you know it's nice. I I loved it as an Idle Hands record when it came out, so I can have it as Idle Hands record. Really cool. One of my favourite promo pictures of like the last few years. Just like looks fucking cool and epic, doesn't it? Um, lovely cover art as well. Like just a, a very nice painting. Um, yeah, absolutely stellar debut record. Just seeing what else is in here. Got uh, just just a lyrics booklet. Very nice. I just remember this being released on Eisenwald Records, who put out, uh, you know, German black metal stuff. And this was the time when they were touring with uh, Gaal and, and Uada and bands like that. Um, and now they're out with fucking Behemoth and Arch Enemy on a, you know, Roadrunner label. Um, yeah, there is all the Eisenwald stuff. Yeah, just fucking that little collection there of... Uh, you know, they've only got two albums, got four releases from them there, one of which is a compilation of two other releases, but, like, it's just non-stop fucking incredible gothic heavy metal songs. Unreal stuff. Speaking of gothic heavy metal, um, these next two things are... Well, next few things, actually, were I went to London, um, 
popped down to London a couple of weeks ago. I spoke about it on the podcast when I went to Incineration Festival and I saw uh, some some shows and, and other things like that. Uh, one of the things I did was on the Friday when I arrived in London and I had some time to kill, uh, I went up to Highgate Cemetery, which is a place I was interested in visiting. I wanted to go to the bit where um, they filmed the intro of the 1970s Tales from the Crypt film. <laughs> That's the kind of nerd I am. Uh, but that was on the other side. It's like split into two halves of cemetery and you have to buy different tickets to go into different sides. But I went to the side that has Karl Marx's grave in there and I visited Karl Marx. Um, had all the, the the banners and stuff that are put down by the various communist parties from all over the world being like, thank you Karl Marx. Um, but uh, like 10 minutes or 15 minutes away from Highgate Cemetery is the Rise Above record store that I did not know existed until something crossed my Instagram like a couple weeks before I was due to go. Um, in there they said they'd only been open for like a year or so but Rise Above is obviously, um, you know, if you are a, a Doom um, uh, lover or kind of just an interest in sort of, you know, underground heavy music um, long running record label uh, ran by Lee Dorian, formerly of Napalm Death and Cathedral uh, but they have now a physical record store that you go and uh, can go and shop in, um, in in Highgate in North London. I went in there, had time to kill, obviously it was near the cemetery. Uh, I did not buy Rise Above releases. I was thinking like maybe I should finally pull the trigger on buying Opus Eponymous, which uh, when you which is like their biggest release ever, obviously. And when you go in there, they've got all the big Rise Above releases, like you know that and um, Uncle Ass and the Deadbeat stuff and some Electric Wizard and that all sort of scattered around um but i bought these two things one of these you may recognize from recently one of them hmm. um i went in there and lee dorian from cathedral was in fact there just manning the uh, the, the record store um so i went in there and had a little chat with him uh but what was particularly funny is of course the fact that i bought cold lake by celtic frost there, which means i bought this off lee dorian and he saw it under like it was hidden underneath the other one and he went cold lake and i had the little you know the smirk from him about buying one of the most infamous uh disaster heavy metal records of all time i obviously had to buy it because celtic frost are the best band ever and this is the only one that uh because it's their shit record and tom g warrior like is deeply disgusted and ashamed by it to this day. Uh, you know, a few years ago, they reissued the entire Frost catalogue. This is the one that they never, ever do. You will never, ever see it reissued by them. You will never see it put on streaming willingly by them. Like, they just don't want to, you know, have it as part of their catalogue, essentially. Um, but it means in order to have Cold Lake and therefore have the entire Celtic Frost um, discography, as I obviously wish to have, uh, you've got to shop around a little bit look for some you know older copies which is this and i bought this for 30 pounds as you can see i haven't taken that off yet uh which fairly decent going for what is i i guess an original copy from the late 1980s um let's get out of the way what's going on here what's happening <laughs> if you've ever seen you know triptychon in the present day Tom G. Warrior, right there. And he is, like, the, the least out of the ordinary person on here. Because th th this, the the suspenders on the fucking unbuttoned jeans showing off the giant mass of pubic hair. Unbelievable that was ever considered a look. And that was uh, ever, you know, thought, you know, let's have that on the back cover record. This is one of the most infamous photos of a band of all time. There are others from this shoot that you can go and find. Um... If you don't know about Cold Lake, because you might not be a Celtic Frost aficionado, uh, it's basically the the mental record where uh, Tom G. Warrior, in sort of a moment of madness, uh, sort of signed off most of the writing to like these other just hired guns, essentially, because he wasn't really interested in doing Celtic Frost at that point in time. Um, and they made this sort of faux but not really glam rock record. It's, you know, basically a, a, an 80s extreme metal band cosplaying as a glam band and not really landing very well in either category um i'm sure at some point we'll have to do something on it on, on on tnm it's a fascinating record a lot of the riffs on it and a lot of songs on it are really really fun and great in a kind of cheesy 80s metal sense but they are marred by um an awful lot of factors to do with it being a Celtic Frost record and some of the weird residue of the kind of band they were not gelling with this and all of that business. 
so much to lay out with this record. It's truly one of the, you know, it, it's it's in that Saint Anger, Elude Divinum Insanus uh, category of just like bands going off the fucking rails. So, you know, whenever people ask you, what's your favourite band's worst album? I never have to think about it. They are one of those bands where uh, it's clear. But I was really stoked to pick this up from, uh, you know, Rise Above, because that this does mean that I have now every Kelly Frost record on, on vinyl, which is obviously the aim. Um, just plain black, but obviously for a, a copy from the late 80s, got the, the Noise Records logo and all that business. Um, I'm always, uh, I always forget how sort of thin records used to be because part of, again, the sort of um, the big boost in vinyl popularity uh, was um, in, in like recent years as most things get printed on kind of like 180 gram quite thick, hefty vinyl. And if you get older records, they're often quite thin in a way they're supposed to just sort of churn them out more more commercially viably, uh, viably even. But uh, yeah, it's been pretty good nick for uh, an old, old record. Um, and yeah, I can now say that uh, I bought a copy of Cold Lake off of Lee Dorian, the man who sang on the side B of Scum, which is always just a wonderful thing. Uh, yeah, more Frost than these to come in these videos, obviously, but uh, that one certainly deserves its own segment. And the other thing I bought is uh, something that I am, was arguably even more stoked to find, if you can believe it, because uh, this is in Solitude and Sister. We did an album club on this, like a month ago um it was probably like three weeks or something before i actually went and bought this record and, and doing that and going so fucking mad on it the way we did because what an incredible record i'm going to assume that most of you watching this will have listened to that and therefore know all about uh sister if you didn't you know before that but um i was you know being so just in love with it and and, and um spending time with it for that i was like need to fucking own this on vinyl at some point and i was looking on discogs and i think i mentioned there were like copies on there for like 200 quid or something so going into rise above and just finding this for 35 pounds considering the uh the gulf there i've just mentioned i was like oh my god snap that up fucking immediately and yeah absolutely immaculate incredible one-of-a-kind gothic heavy metal um cult classic by a band who uh made this record and then you know kind of just left on a a really really high note like that um incredibly stoked to, to have this it's on a kind of uh yeah a, a black and white splatter which looks very very nice and classy um i'm trying to remember when the sort of splatter craze came into records i suppose 2013 is uh still late enough for that to be true. Uh, they were advertising that it came with some, here it is, a little little photo card of them looking all spooky and shit. Um, I can't remember who it was, but someone put in the TNN Discord where we did the album club, uh, some videos of them on like Swedish TV uh, playing in like an old haunted Swedish murder cathedral or something like that. Something where some crimes went down and yeah, it was all just very very spooky and very fucking cool but um, yeah, if you don't know In Solitude, I mean, we went so hard on it on the album club that I would hope that we've sold it to you enough. But uh, this is a, a, a one of the great uh, uh, original kind of, you know, um, very distinctive heavy metal records of, uh, I would say, the 2010s, if not the 21st century. Um, I need to buy their other records. I think they did have more of those in Rise Above. But uh, yeah, just that, that cover art and just how haunting and how kind of, I don't know, it stirs something and you want to know what's going on in there and what you get is just fucking absolutely incredible uh dark cultish music um so that was my rise above haul probably spent more than i should have but when you find those two things it was like okay um they had like other i think some like old original copies of like uh, the the good 80s Celtic frost records that were like you know hundreds of pounds or something and i was like oh one day um but uh, after Incineration Festival, I went to see Lamp of Murmur at their first UK show. I spoke about all that on the podcast. Uh, this was what I managed to grab from the fucking trench warfare, storming the fucking beaches of Normandy uh, assault that was trying to reach their merch table. There was not like half an hour waits of people like at the start, and then they just fucking sold out of absolutely everything. Uh, but this is Lamp of Murmur's 
Punishment and Devotion EP. We spoke about their album Submission and Slavery last year uh, when it came out. We reviewed it. It's kind of, you know, raw black metal, but infused with loads of kind of Susie and the Banshees, um, uh, you know, and kind of gothy dance beats and riffs and stuff like that, which means there's real creativity in this kind of music, which is so rare for what is, a, you know, usually sort of termed, you know, dustbin kind of black metal. That's why Land of Murmur are like the hyped band around because they are so fucking good at it and so uh, creative and have their own identity in that world. It's very fucking rare that you get something to such degree. Um, but I sort of went up to this and I, and I was going to see if they had any records of Submission and Slavery because I wanted it. Um, they didn't. They only had these. Uh, this record is, uh, when that album came out, they did a bonus EP that they put up on the band camp of two off-cut tracks that didn't make it onto that record and it's kind of interesting that they didn't make it on because that record was so short it's only like half an hour or something including a, a a cover um but these are these other two songs uh are were are more riffy kind of aggressive uh violent black metal songs than most of the sort of goth leaning stuff that characterized that record so i can see sort of out of push why you would want to uh, get rid of them. Um, but they had these, and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll buy something from the show. So fucking glad I did, because uh, I, when I got home and opened it, um, as you will be able to see on this inner sleeve, it says here that uh, this record was only to be uh, sold, and was made exclusively to be sold at the Lamp of Murmur sold-out show at the Electro Works in London on Saturday the 8th of May, 2022. Had no idea of that when I picked it up, and that went, oh shit, so this is going to be in high demand, isn't it, for everyone else? Um, and yeah, it was. I came home the next day, looked on fucking eBay, and uh, there was a, a one of these up there that was going for like £99 or something by the end of the fucking bidding. Absolutely ridiculous. I bought it for 20 Very glad I bought it. Um, signed by M on the back there. There he is, looking all cultish. Uh, and it, yeah, and it has these two tracks that are, again, the more aggressive, riffy, fucking... They played one of them at a show, and it's just, like, actually really catchy, really strong uh, riff. What is, again, the B-sides of the songs that you know, didn't get on a raw black metal album. And it's like, oh, shit, they're good. But the physical version also has this exclusive uh, cover on it of Qual by Exmal Deutschland. Um, Lamp of Murmur, he likes to do sort of old 80s goth covers, bonus tracks and stuff on his, on his records. Uh, there's one of Dead Can Dance. Um, I think the last one had Rudimentary Peni, maybe? I can't remember exactly. Um, but this band, uh, unlike those, I had no idea who they fucking were. I'd never heard of them. Um, but this cover is super fucking cool. Uh, and it made me go and check out the original song as well, which is great as well. Like Again, just really... Um, you can probably tell from a name like that how sort of like militaristically dancey, uh, you know, goth, um, dark wave stuff. Uh, but uh, both the original song and the, the raw black metal cover of it, but maintaining that dancey side of it, are wicked. Um, I think this is just a, a black vinyl. Let me just check that. Uh, yes, it is. But um, a pretty exclusive little thing to get. Now I just need to actually get the real album that they were, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, excised from. And I'll have the proper Lamp of Murmur collection, aside from demos and all that shit, um, which is mainly what that set comprised of. It was like this and demos and songs from the first album. But uh, yeah, really glad to have actually, or sort of almost on a whim, gone, yeah, I'll, I'll get something from this show and, and grab this. Um, so that was the stuff from my little London trip I did. Next up, I have a couple of uh, brand new albums, some of my uh, favourite records of the first leg of this year that I, I selected. Um, and the first one is something that I was sort of referenced on the podcast that I was waiting for. It's The Agony and Ecstasy of Watain, uh, a record that we reviewed not too long ago, came out at the very end of April. Um, if you don't recognise this cover, this is because this is the very fancy edition. Uh, this is number 212 of 1,333. That they did. I don't know why they did that specific number, but given Watain's obsession with numerology and all that sort of nonsense, it's probably got some, you know, maybe it's half of 2,666. I don't know. But uh, this is, uh, well, as soon as these went up, I mean, I love the, the sort of extra artwork they've got for it. Um, so I was like, I'm buying that. Um, pre order that. Inside, we have, of course, the central record. Um, this cover has grown on me. I wasn't wild on it at first, um, but there's a lot of awesome shit, you know, going on behind here. Um, 
I fucking love Watang. I've mentioned it enough fucking times. They are like one of top five favorite band of all time for me and so when they do something like a big fancy edition of a new record i'll be like yeah i'll pre-order that immediately uh really cool color on this one um a a red sort of smoky uh splatter looks very very nice i'm not sure if that was just for the limited edition or whether that was for for all of them but um looks great has some posters and stuff inside, which are being watting, are all just like fucking mental looking. Um, actually, also, I think I, I didn't even find this big sticker, shiny sticker of the original logo um, for the album. Also, I love the like the detail and stuff they put into their lyrics, uh, booklets, and stuff like that. Like the the Lawless Darkness one always fucking blows my mind for the quality of the art inside. But this. Looks great. Got that sticker. Got the CD with it, which is always extra fancy when they include the little, the little disc in with the records. I'm trying to find the ridiculous posters I mentioned. I think they might be in this little uh, sachet. Look at that squad. <laughs> Look at Eric at the back there doing his oh, um, fucking what a terrifying group of fellows. Uh, the only one who I can tell, I can tell that's Eric. The only other one who I can tell who it is is Alvaro, who is the bassist, because of that silly looking beard. <laughs> Just poking out underneath his Watain face mask. Um, and then they are holding torches and shit on the back. Um, I won't be putting that up, but it's a nice little thing to whip out and gaze at from time to time of just, you know, the fellas looking a bit intense. Um, the main thing that was sort of sold with this, uh, I mean, really, I wanted like the nice leather case sort of more than anything. Um, the main thing that was sort of sold to go with like what was making this so fancy is uh, something that we've sort of memed a little bit, um, but this is the actual, the context for it. This is a Watain prayer cloth, <laughs> which is, uh, it feels like a bit of inevitability that at some point I would own a Watain prayer cloth, even though I hold absolutely zero religious beliefs myself, and I'm certainly not a, a avowed Satanist the way that the Watain bros are, but um, just like in terms of like a funny little item, it's got the same artwork that's on the back of this leather case. It does look very, very cool. Um, yeah, but it's just, you know, in a, in a sort of a black metal sense, if you're a black metal lover and you like satanic black metal and stuff like that, and you are you know, at least attracted to that kind of esoteric world, if not, you know, an actual believer in it, which is what I would describe myself as. Um, something like a a Watain prayer cloth. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure Batushka or someone would do something similar if they were coherently a band. Um, but yeah, it's just a, a fucking nice, cool little item to add to your shelf of spooky shit, I suppose. But yeah, this record, um, I haven't mentioned what I've said about the music, I suppose, could be reviewed on the podcast, but um, Agnes of Watain, it's uh, a via for my, is that a word, a via? Um, sure, for my favourite record of the year so far. I don't think it's quite at number one right now, but it is um, an absolute fucking blast of uh, the best straight up black metal band in the world, um, in my opinion. Going through a whole, like, a, a good range without it being a sort of an overlong record of the kind of things that they do where there are super aggressive songs that are just so alive really kind of anthemic melodic songs uh and then some kind of more expansive and experimentally stuff where the song we remain um featuring uh someone from in solitude actually uh, but also um farida from the devil's blood singing is just fucking immaculately spooky and immaculately immersive which is why i would love to get again a record like this and just Put it on and have this whole lavish kind of packaging for it um i've got some other similar cool watain stuff sitting around on the shelf but nothing will quite of this uh no prayer cloth prior to this basically is what i'm saying but um fantastic album um not one of my favorites from them but uh one of the best bands ever for me uh so awesome package to get I'll put that together properly in a bit after i finish filming but when i say that it's not quite at number one for me so far um it's I think that slot right now is going to this record, which similarly is absolutely nowhere near being my favourite record from this band. I am hoping that something of real fucking magnitude comes out and, and blasts all of that away. But it's Ghost and Impera. Um, what more can be said about this, really? It's, it's probably the big event uh, rock release of 2022 
thus far. Um, even though it got dethroned by what was it, the fucking Chili Peppers, uh, in terms of sales and that. But um, I wasn't planning on buying it immediately. But then I ordered this uh, as soon as they had that kind of chart battle, and it was like Ghost could get their first UK number one. And it was like, okay, I'll jump on board. Um, yeah, it's just in terms of fucking quality of songs and, and sing-alongs and everything like that. I mean, the tour was amazing for, again, fucking... Even though they weren't even playing super large amounts from this. Like, everything on side B of this record didn't get played on that. And you, you might see them do Griftwood and all that kind of business. But uh, Kaiserion, Spillways, just absolutely... I mean, Spillways, just absolutely incredible songs. Um, cool artwork, cool Alistair Crowley referencing crazy looking artwork from um, the artwork the, the guy I can't remember the, the guy who does those paintings um, he's got an extremely long Polish name uh, he did cool stuff for I think Watin actually but also um, Deicide and that kind of thing you, you know the guy I'm talking about the guy who does these crazy detailed uh, bits of art and speaking of that if I'm talking about cool lyrics booklets and stuff like that uh, Ghosts holy shit especially for a band like again Watin sort of a cult metal you expect some sort of that but like for like a big band on their level no one's doing gorgeous uh inlays and packaging and shit like this the way ghost are and uh there's, there's some fun stuff in this in terms of how it's referencing song contents and stuff like that um where is it there's trump's in here somewhere there he is <laughs> uh for for 20s which you know obviously the big fascist dictator song on their business clearly sort of deified ugly fat trump there um and similarly for griftwood uh, everyone knows that's about mike pence by that point there he is looking unholy or whatever i guess but uh, i'm sure a bunch of you will own this record similarly to me because uh, it's like i said one of the big records of the year so far everyone seems to fucking love it um for me it's always gonna be those first three records particularly the first one but like in terms of just knocking out the biggest fucking songs in the world <laughs> right now. Um, yeah, what more can be really said about what Tobias is doing with Ghost? And uh, yeah, as it stands right now, this is the thing that I've listened to the most this year for just uh, tunage. Um, lots of different variants of this album were available for uh, in all different shops and stuff like that. I'm sure a bunch of you have a different one depending on where you got. This is a blue one, which I thought sort of went with the cover art most nicely, I suppose. Uh, this was the HMV variant i think i think there was like a red one or something or other from like banquet records in the uk uh all sorts you know fucking i don't know what on earth the fucking swedish variants will be i'm sure that alec will probably have those and they'll be fucking you know the size of that watting box but uh yeah big big album um shockingly this is the first ghost record i've picked up on vinyl i mentioned looking for opus eponymous in rise above earlier um clearly i need the previous four albums and seven inches and all that kind of shit um but uh i suppose this is the one that's cracked that seal um yeah one of the best bands around obviously uh next record is going smaller than that considerably so uh but something i also picked up not long ago this is nine covens and on the dawning of light this is a uk black metal project i suppose in a way you could call it a uk black metal super group um they, uh, it, it featured, I, I always think of it being related to Winter Phillip, because Chris Norton from, from Winter Phillip, uh, sings on this. There was a while back when this record came out where they were trying to be anonymous. Um, and it was like, you know, ooh, uh, no one knows who's in this band. And they only had like initials or something. Um, but it was so clearly Chris singing. It was like, that's that guy. I just don't know who the rest of you are. Uh, it turns out the rest of them are, I believe, someone who used to play in Cradle of Filth who has maybe been The King is Blind since, or something like that, but uh, somewhere from Extreme Noise Terror, I think. But anyway, this record came out in 2012. Uh, they recently, um, like a couple months ago, did a new reissue of it, which is what this is. It's probably out of print for a while. Um, it's got a kind of slightly different colour variant on the cover, these sort of orangey effects uh, around the edges, and the yellows weren't quite there on the original variant, but I think this actually looks nicer than it used to. Um, and it's on a bloody big, fancy splatter effect vinyl of uh cool black and red um but yeah when, when uh they, they posted this that was going up i was like yeah i like that record back in 2012 i should probably pick that up um it's not like you know the most essential black metal release ever like it's, it's definitely for like you know four fans of those kind of bands i mentioned if you're a fan of those musicians this is another project where they do it's more straightforward kind of evil black metal than if you know winter Phillip and there's all the sort of 
naturalistic uh, and more melodic and prettier sides of what they what they do. Uh, if you like the more just kind of bestial end of something like that, uh, Nine Covens and a record like this fixes you up quite well. Uh, good, solid black metal record. Was glad to add its connection. Um, something I should have got out here, actually, I don't think I have, is uh, they were packaging it with a 7-inch. So give me one second of finding it in my big pile of 7-inches. Here we are. Uh, I have two of these because I own this before ordering the album. Um, this is Nine Covens again, uh, the Thy Unknowing Servants 7-inch. I actually think this is their best release um, in terms of like, obviously that's the that's the full length album. This came out in 2017, I think. So like being a side project, they're not active very often. They came back, put the 7-inch out, which has one original song on it on side A. Uh, and side B is a cover of The Return of the Darkness and Evil by Bathory, which is a fucking ripping classic extreme metal song Watain have covered it as well uh, everyone should cover that song it just fucking rips if you just want straight up classic 1980s you know first wave black metal goodness it's as good a song as any two cover um, this cover obviously naturally it rips but also the the uh, the via knowing servant song that's on side a I think is probably the best nine covens song uh, as I said I purchased I, I think it's this one um, back in 2017 when they Put that out um but unbeknownst to me uh they were also sending those out with that reissue of, of uh the record so i have another one um which i haven't quite figured out what to do with yet if there's any any of my friends around who, who want a copy or well, i should just have two or or whatever but um double the battery i suppose um but yeah nine covens good solid kind of um uk bm project Ahab is where we're going next, and The Giant, which is one of my favourite album covers of all time. Look at that. Look how fucking immaculately gorgeous that is. The inside is all the same. Uh, each one of these illustrations correlating to one of the, the songs that it's the lyrics for. I particularly like the, uh, the one for Deliverance with the kind of ghosts leaning over the ship, which if you know the context of the song, um, is very cool. By context, what I mean by that is that Ahab are um, a, a funeral doom band, but they are one of the most unique. Uh, and they I don't think if you just imagine what a funeral doom sounds like, uh, there's more to Ahab than you might expect than that. There's sort of, you know, if you are a prog fan and you like, you know, progressive, um, very sort of, sort of noodly but pretty uh, and, you know, purposeful, um, guitar playing and stuff like that. Uh, this was is the record where they really started. It's their third album. It's where they really started discovering onto that thing. Um, I fucking adore this album so much. It's one of my favorite albums of. Uh, I about to say the last ten years. This is ten years old now, um, and I think it is probably just over that date by a month or so by this point. Um, but uh, it's fucking gorgeous. And Ahab's whole thing. They're sort of what I'm talking about with, with these elements, is uh, nautical funeral doom, I guess. Um, they have some quite wonderful shirts uh, of uh, with, like, campaign for musical deceleration or something like that. Um, but uh, they, they write these sort of conceptual doom records about uh, naval stories, and particularly naval fiction, where the first record they put out, um, called The Wretched Sea, uh, their name, Ahab, naturally, that's about Moby Dick, you know, came out not too long after Leviathan, the two great Moby Dick-themed uh, heavy metal concept albums. Um, but since then, they've, you know, moved from story to story, uh, and uh, this particular one is based on Edgar Allan Poe story, uh, the narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym. Um, and I, not too long ago, uh, related to purchasing the record, is I was reading Edgar Allan Poe, um, and I read, got to that particular story, and I went, you know what? I am going to finally, 10 years after that, purchase this fucking incredible record uh, on vinyl. Um, and I had that on when I was reading that particular thing for you know the mood building and, and whatnot. Um, so you've got this story about a, uh, you know, a, a ship traveling the seas, but it's, uh, specifically in this story, it goes in towards you know, the Antarctic and stuff like that. And the general, I just feel that the, the starkness and the desolation and the sort of loneliness of kind of being lost at sea. Like, you know, imagine yourself, you know, just one person, you in a little boat out in the fucking ocean with nothing around you for, for miles around um, and the sort of the hopelessness of that kind of situation. 
one of the great mind's eye conjurations of that kind of feeling through uh, music that Ahab kind of get through their combination of you know really crushing doom and then really sparse uh, mournful clean passages and stuff like that the combination of two things on this particular record is 10 out of 10 just fucking uh, this is a classic modern day uh, metal record for me in its own little um, niche but like Again, artwork wise, fucking like even the font on the back, like it's so so evocative. Um absolutely gorgeous album. Again, all the little details here of like the squid and the the seagulls and, and all that shit. Um if you've never heard Ahab and you're sort of interested in some of the things that I'm saying in terms of just like real immersion into that kind of uh lonely it's often quite quiet again with clean passages and stuff but then it will just fucking crush you um but uh incredible incredible album i need to buy the rest of theirs um on, on this particular format but uh hope they come back soon it's been about seven years since their last album which was the follow-up to this one um and yeah they're, they're one of the the great unsung um classic bands of, of their era for my money uh and then finally another video is going a little bit long but i had a bunch of shit as i said uh, is I believe I mentioned this was coming on a previous episode. We're well, back to Wode uh, and their record. This is Servants of the Counter Cosmos. And then, seeing as I thought, uh, I don't think I've shown it in any of the other ones. I should probably do it here. Uh, this is the first Wode album, which I think is just self titled. Um, Wode, uh, their record, um, I've forgotten the fucking title of it now. I had a funny, weird title. But um, the one from last year uh, is fucking incredible um a bunch of you um like more than you would imagine for like a, a small uk black metal band um I, I know a lot of people in the audience really vied with that record and and, and loved it um i showed it in a video uh, a few of these back um and i mentioned that uh service of the count cosmos which is their second record um they had reissued and it was the only one else i didn't have and i had ordered it and it was coming well it came here it is um Amazing album artwork. Well, the thing between Woad is they do have one of the absolute best uh, album art and general sort of merch aesthetics and stuff like that. It's not, um, I don't know, it's not like a very particular thing to them, but they just have really fucking nice designs and stuff like that. And they do tend to use sort of classic paintings and, and stuff like that in their uh, artwork. This has again, because even the record is Servants of the Counter Cosmos, there is something very cosmic about uh, this particular image. And then, you know, this wizard fella. But then also there's all the people around him sort of reeling in um, shock at what's going on. Uh, is this just black vinyl? It is just a, a black vinyl. But um, this is a fucking ripper of a record. Like, god damn. Like, this is a, so, some of this is so riffy. And so, you know, if you enjoyed uh, the heavy metal side of, of their latest record, because they are, obviously, it's a black metal band, but they do have a real sort of 80s metal uh, kick. I think that was the most prominent on that latest record, and it's part of why it is their their best album because they're so good at this bit. But Servants of the Counter Cosmos is like a violent record, like just really burly and, and, and nasty. Uh, and yeah, like this, when this came out, it did sort of set them further apart. I was like, oh man, this band are really onto something. Uh, the record that I got into them on is their debut record. This, I believe, is my original copy that I purchased um, in. 2016 when this came out it's got a bit of damage on the top there but uh no worry um yeah self title record and this has the general sound and sort of uh again viciousness of of uh what woe do but it's got some kind of longer songs on it and it's slightly more of the melodic side i guess there's this first track death's edifice which is still one of their best but like uh you know when we mentioned those sort of swedish style black metal melodic leads and stuff like that like really um just ear catching uh i think this is also just a black vinyl yeah uh fair enough small uk band um but when i mentioned classic paintings and stuff like that this record artwork is so striking uh and it's you may well recognize the the style of it um it's from uh a different polish guy to the world i before um but equally um difficult to remember name but his name is uh Bekshinsky, um and then something or other beginning with a Z with uh, his uh, first name. But uh, unbelievable fucking artist. Like, this is not one of his best paintings. And that's 
all that can really be uh, all that needs to be said about him. He had a fascinating life. He um, grew up in, in in Poland in the kind of post war and you know, World War Two uh, years, which uh, and obviously saw an awful lot of um, just fucking human travesty and, uh, and cruelty that seemed to really creep its way into sort of the the darkness and and uh, existential decay of. Uh, his artwork and if you know his style um, and you are a listener to underground metal like it will pop out everywhere like you'll see and go like, oh yeah that's, a, that's an Evoken cover or that's a that's an autopsy EP or, or whatever and it's because he does have like um, probably you know one of the only people maybe the only one to ever really rival uh, HR Giga in the kind of distinctive style combined with heavy metal influence and horror influence uh, again, just the detail on this, the kind of architecture and stuff of it. Uh, and then he uh, got stabbed to death by someone in, a, in an argument. And kind of, you know, in his, I don't know, his 60s or 70s or something. Like, you know, lived this fucking insane life and produced this, like, fucking staggering body of work of, like, hundreds and hundreds of, like, paintings of this calibre that are so haunting. Um, and then went out in this fucking insane tragic way um and i'm talking about the art there but it's just so striking but um yeah fascinating figure and certainly if you're interested in sort of dark artwork and stuff like that and you don't know uh Bekshinsky, um google him go and find those paintings they're all fucking staggering um but on a nice little wode album um interesting to, to know i guess how are these things public domain do these things kind of they have to secure the rights to you these paintings or, or whatever i don't know because he obviously is um long dead by this point but uh yeah this was a, a very good uk bm debut album that when it came out i went oh man there's some fucking quality uh guitar playing and, and, and atmosphere going on here um i'm gonna pick that one up uh and then they have only like rewarded my my confidence and initial interest in them more and more over the years i was at a show black metal show last night i saw mayhem um and there was like two or three people around me just in road shirts a band who are very much on the up and this is the beginnings of that last thing i think i'm waiting for to come through and again some of these were long-standing orders and stuff like that the last thing is uh employed to serve conquering i know that they've finally actually been able to put that out and uh, i know a lot of you have received yours um i ordered mine at the same time as the rest of you and uh currently isn't here but maybe next time that will arrive um and yeah that's that's the state of where we're at and that is finally the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, as I said, that was a big pile of stuff that had sort of accumulated for me in um, the last couple of months and stuff like that. My initial idea of a sort of slightly themed video, um, I will come to next. I will put that up in a couple of weeks or so, whenever I get the moment to uh, do it. Um, thank you so much for continued interest in these. It's been about a month and a half or so since uh, I think Sam was the last one to do this. Um, so yeah sticking with it um sam will probably be back to do one of those after my next one um here on the patreon uh we've got the death special finishing up very very soon um and then whatever comes on the horizon after that but thank you so much for sticking with it yeah hails